top of the morning Raider Nation. It's Wednesday, August 30th in the year of 2023. Uh, we're going to do our blog a little bit later. First, I wanted to respond to some comments. Um, I think it's important that we continue dialogue with what's going on with management, personnel, you know, on the back end, Mark Davis, ownership, you know, you name it. Uh, there's a lot going on there. And, and trust me, a lot of my friends are on the same page as you. So, and I, and I 100% do not disagree with any of you. Your opinion matters so much, man. How you feel about this team matters so much. It's going to affect you for the next 18 weeks, maybe 20 weeks, because we still got two weeks before the season. So, uh, uh, 20 weeks of of being a Raider faithful fan, man. I am here with you, man. I, I share your pain. Uh, I'll explain myself real quick. I get so pumped up for a game. I am that doormat Raider fan. I, I should actually, I'm going to take that back. I am not a doormat Raider fan. I'm just a very, my heart's in it. My heart is in this. And when you have your heart in something and you don't succeed, it's failure. And that failure is a pain, man. That failure is like, damn, you're bummed. It's like a, it's like a, it, it, it shouldn't be a severe pain. It's just like, dang, man, didn't get that one. We were close. Didn't get that one, man. Almost won that game or almost had that job or whatever it was, man, that, that set it back a little bit. No matter what, that's the process, man. And that's the best part of success, man. Um, the Raiders were very successful early on, man, and we've been through, and, and I never, ever, ever felt as a kid growing up, I felt like we just had an edge to us, and it started with our fans. It started with how our fans were so passionate, so I'm going to get to some comments because they are spot on, and I want to say what's up to some of you guys, like Oregon South Reps, I believe. Hey, man, shout out to you, dude. It's been a minute, and I, and I thank you for staying subbed to this channel, man. <laughs> I have not put out content, and uh, I do appreciate your comment, man, and I appreciate you sticking around because I know I've done a variety variety of different things such as highlight videos live streams you name it this time i'm going the blog route i always like to set my myself a little bit different than other content creators and i want to make sure that when i get on here man we're having a wholehearted uh, uh discussion so and i remember i was really high on rugs back in the day so i know i know that you know you're like hey you're the guy that chose uh rugs over cd lamb yep that, I'm, I'm that guy man i am that guy and uh uh but anyway what's up to you man i'm, I'm glad to see you back and sticking around and and, and you know joining in on the conversation man and thank you very much to the two subscribers that popped in. Uh, that does mean a lot, man, because that means the voice was heard. And like I said, I do appreciate, I do appreciate feedback. I appreciate uh, your opinion, man. So that way we can continue the dialogue. So let's get into to, to some of your comments and uh, go from there, man. Boom. So... So, and here I am, I'm pepping up the Raiders and Dave Ziegler. <laughs> Dave Ziegler is stacking talent on this roster. All righty, man. So here we go. One hour ago, hey, Southern Re uh, Oregon reps, man. That was one hour ago that you uh, popped this. A lot of Josh Jacobs' success last year was due to the fact that we had a potato at quarterback. We couldn't trust Carr, and Josh got a ton of extra touches. True. And, uh, you know, and I mean, there's so many, uh, you know, like... Uh, like Derek Carr, man, I was I was pretty critical of, not to a certain degree degree where I'm like like Derek Carr sucks or anything like that. He, in my personal opinion, I'm gonna be straight up. I personally think Derek Carr is a slightly below average quarterback. That's just my opinion right now, and that's because of the win loss record. I mean, he's achieved certain stats that that kind of pop some eyes, but overall, Derek Carr loses football games, and Derek Carr. It seems like there's something on the sidelines where there's like something ain't clicking, and and it seemed like and and just my personal opinion, Derek Carr took too many things personal. Um, he should have took losing personal versus anything. And Josh Dubo, when anytime Josh Dubo would bring up a stat, I side with Josh Dubo because he had great great takes, and Derek would always get offended. And then the way his brother got offended, all that fun stuff. I, like I said, all the best to Derek, but from what I've heard. Uh, some fans like Jameis Winston a little bit more in New Orleans, but, uh, but I'll leave it at that. But, but Derek, you know, nine, nine seasons, you know, it, it is what it is, man. And, uh, I w I personally wish we could have got a backup quarterback, maybe a young guy back there just to push Derek a little bit. Um, uh, you know, I just feel that competition edge. And now we kind of have that. We kind of have Jimmy Garoppolo. He's, he's the, 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 
the starting quarterback, but then you have Aiden O'Connell who's catching eyes in the preseason. So, you know, that's a good that's a good thing if Aiden O'Connell is happens to be that the that guy that could compete for the starting role, you know, down the down the stretch. So uh, so yeah, man, appreciate your comment and um, and then right here, prime timer eighty five, man, definitely one hundred percent right here, dude. I'm with you, man. I'm this guy with you right here. We've been blind and optimistic our whole lives. 100%, dude. I say Super Bowl every year. Do you know how many Charger fans, especially Charger, I'm in Southern California, Charger fans, Bronco fans are out here, barely any Chiefs fans. I never run into Chiefs fans. It's really rare that I, I see them in Vegas sometimes. But uh, And he says, me, 40 years. Okay, so me, I'm 44 years old. I was 7 years old when I took this team on. So, yeah, man, I'm right there with you. I'm 37 years. I turn 45 next month, so I'm with you, bro. Um, I remember, I remember the vibe, dude, of the mid eighties, man. And, and, and by the way, I have an older brother that's like 11 years older than me. My dad's 81 years old. I mean, I'm an old school cat. My dad grew up watching Jim Brown. My dad's from Ohio. He loved Jim Brown. So, I mean, like we talked about players. My grandfather's a diehard Raider fan. His favorite player was Ben Davidson. He liked Daryl LaMonica. You know, I hear those stories from those voices and those are the people that raised me. You know what I mean? So like, I, you know, I feel like I get a little part of that. I'm a Gen X kid. I get a little bit, I'm, I'm an 80s kid. You know, I was born in 1978. So I'm like, you know, we got the skateboarding. We had all that evolution of everything that we have right now from music to, you know, skateboarding to graffiti to hip hop music to everything that's happened in the last 40 years, man. The culture of everything that we are right now as fans, what, you know, how we tailgate everything. Tailgating, I started doing when I was 17, man, buy a grill at it. You go to, Wal you could, well, back then there weren't Walmarts everywhere, but you could go to a, a department store, grab like a $15 uh, grill, a bag of charcoal, and literally build the thing in the parking lot, tailgate, and then throw the damn, gr we'd always throw the grill in the trash and then leave the game, but, well, I mean, we were done or just leave it in the parking lot, but I'm just saying like, it's our culture, man, and we we put a lot into this, and I know I'm rambling now, but we put a lot into this team, man, so 100%. I'm with you, dude, 100%. However, I'm a glass half full guy, dude. I'm an optimistic guy. No matter how much the walls feel, they're, it feels like the walls are closing in. No matter how much it feels like, hey, man, you know what, we're never going to get anywhere. Or like, you know, like, like we all have these goals and dreams, man. And you know what? Every day we have a purpose to strive for those. So that's my point is that sometimes it always doesn't fall into place. And sometimes, yeah, man, you know, teams like the Patriots, they end up winning six Super Bowls. Man, I would have never thought that the Patriots were going to win six Super Bowls, you know, when the Raiders were winning the AFC West titles in year 2002. So uh, you learn as a man or woman that it's show me, it's show me no more telling me. And I t totally agree, man. You got to show me. You got to show me what we're doing here. But at the same time, this is a football game. It's a business at the same time. These guys, they have to win. There's pressure to win on everybody. Um, and I 100% agree. As he continues on here, we deserve way better. We're the most loyal, deserving fans. I 100% agree, dude. The 100, we are the most loyal, deserving fans in any sport. I'll speak on that, man. How many times have I... I mean, like we've come into so many games, we bring an opposing fan with us, and Raider Nation treats them good, man. Barbecue, good tailgate, good beer, good smack talk. Most time you go to a game in Oakland, it's good smack talk, man. And uh, I like good football smack talk. You know, when we get into like, you know, some cut downs are cool. If it's funny, it's funny, whatever it is, you know. But, but we are the most loyal, deserving fans in any sport. I 100% agree, and it's gonna be crazy how I'm gonna like jump off of this dude because i am 100 percent with you i've just made adjustments in my life and i've made adjustments in my life and how i put uh finances into the team and things like that you know as far as like you know you got to protect your dollar too man we're buying jerseys every year of players that are busted draft picks so I'll, <laughs> i might make some people mad on this but my jamarcus russell white jersey the white jersey that i have of jamarcus russell i took his last name off and i put daniel carlson's name on it because I'm not going to go buy another jersey, straight up. You know, Jamarcus Russell was a bust. But I guess uh, they're saying Trey Lance might might have beat that so far. But, hey, he's still playing in the league. But, anyway, uh, so only two or three teams have more losses than us in the past 20 seasons. Exactly, 100%. Uh, that, yeah, t two or three more teams. And I'll even, I'll even pop on that, dude. I think we're one of six teams uh, since, like, 
we're one of six teams that haven't won a playoff game since 2002. And we haven't won a road playoff game, I believe, in like 40 years or something like that. It's crazy, man. And it sucks. And they started talking this smack back in like the, like the late 90s. They're like, you guys are going to be – they started calling us faders and stuff. And it sucks because those fans that were talking that smack or, or analysts or whatever, they're right. They are right. The common de- denominator is ownership and front office. I don't agree. And the reason why I'm going to say this, man, is it is it is the common denominator den, uh the common denom- denominator is ownership. However, man, we have to look at how fragile this is with ownership. We have Mark Davis who is the Al Davis family owning the team. I would not want like a, a corporation or anybody. I mean, I know we're already corporate being in Vegas, but I would not want a corporation owning our team. You know, I would not want a corporation owning our team. And uh, I kind of want a football person owning the team. So I kind of think it's a good thing that Tom Brady is in there in ownership role. I don't know how much his role is going to be for the future or whatever, but he's a football guy. So I'm just saying like it's better to have football guys at this point. And I'm not saying Mark Davis is a true football guy, but Mark Davis listens to consultants such as when John Madden was around back in 2011, he consulted with them. They hired Reggie McKenzie. I liked that hire. I thought Reggie McKenzie got us some players we're not we're not working we're not you know no magic is happening yet found us a quarterback for nine seasons we we know where we were at there and then you know Mike Mayock and John Gruden you know they got us some players and now we're seeing Dave Ziegler and Josh McDaniels I know it's disappointing you're looking at the the 2022 draft going oh man we only got you know a couple players left off that draft but we also got a draft pick in exchange we were without a first and second round pick and we got Dylan Parham who I think is going to be special and then we got Thayer Mumford on the right side, who's probably going to be competing for that right side. We already know he is, but I mean, all off season, that's what I was pretty much saying. You know, he's an intriguing uh, prospect and, and played 17 games last year. So there are some things to like about management in the last, you know, 11, 12 years compared to what we dealt with before with Al Davis. And we saw what happened, man. There was a lot of uh, dysfunction, man, you know, fights in the office and all that. So we had to clean up a little bit. And, uh, you know, Al got old, man, and, 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 you know, and, you know, Raiders went on, man, and, and here we are, man, we're in a different, a completely different element compared to what we saw, you know, you being a a 40 year Raider fan, man, we've seen a lot, we've seen a lot, especially with Al Davis, so, and I 100% agree with you, Uh, we are respecting ourselves and demanding more, of course, 100%, but that's where I say, man, that's where I say, like, I'm creative, dude. I've got the right tickets this year. I don't feel like, I mean, the tickets are a little bit more than they were before, but yes, demand more. But you know what? Also, we still got to be in those other fans' ears, man. We still got to let them know who we are and how passionate we are. And that's where I come in, man. And that's where I like to share my passion, man. And where, like, you know, fans smack talk me all the time, but I'm smiling back all the time. I'm smiling back because, you know what? It's still one play at a time. It's one player at a time. It's, I mean, one play. And here's the thing. That's why I always want to get back to the root of football. One play can change it all, man. Like one play. Like we could, like literally we could have a week four matchup where like a guy like, let's say like Trey Tucker breaks out or something, dude. Or or let's say a defensive player just rises up in the mix and you next thing you know a, it could be a linebacker safety you just never know and that guy is the locker room mentor that guy's like a like an ed reed just pours his heart out on the field we don't know what we have yet in product and that's why we say it's a fresh season every year on a fresh season we should be optimistic man so uh and looking at your name too prime timer 85 so we're you know 85 was about the time that i started understanding the game of football and um you know, so, but anyway, uh, but I do not love your comment, man. It, I caught it this morning, and so I had to get on here. And, uh, of course, you know, traffic out here in California sucks. I got to get on the road soon. But uh, if you can't get it done, you need to get out. Totally agree. And these guys do. It's a fast, ever-changing, uh, um, you know, the NFL, man. You just, it's not for long. <laughs> just like in life, don't let someone disrespect you and walk all over you as you just sit there and say, okay, I believe you say, I believe you when you say you will change. We are all loyal, but don't be a punching bag for anybody and demand for, demand more or you're just a doormat. No more talk, no more hype, no more blind crap. Show us, don't tell us, or they need to get out now. 
100% agree. However, I got their back right now, man. We're in this right now to win it. We're in it right now to win it. And, uh, and definitely, man. And I know, dude, trust me. I'll tell you my, 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 here's my thing, dude. When I go down, dude, like, like, let's say like, you'll know, dude, if the Raiders lost, if you're around me, dude, I literally go to bed. I get so sad, so sad, man, when this team loses, dude, it's like, cause I get so pumped up for the game, but I want to win. I want to win so bad. Like winning's like number one, but I, but I don't, but I look back and I go, Hey, it was a good day, man. I fired up the grill. There was good plays, and we just weren't good enough. Sometimes I just got to tip my hat because the other team made a play. But no matter what, this is football, man. It's a game, and there's so much to this game. There's so much to life, and there's so much to this game, and they, they kind of relate. You know what I mean? It's like you got your four quarters of football. You got your fourth four quarters in life. You know, I feel like I'm at halftime right now at age 45, man. I look at it like I got another 45 years. I'm at halftime, man. That's why I'm making adjustment. That's why I didn't do a podcast for a couple of years because I was like, I'm going to take a step back and then I'm going to come back and we're going to, I'm going to address this a little bit different because number one, I get along great with Raider Nation, man. I could be in a grocery store line. We're high-fiving and, you know, and I, but I know when somebody's not believing in the team, man, because I get really pumped up, man. I'm, I'm the type that I'll talk your ear off. I had one guy who goes, hey, saw my Raider tattoo. He goes, hey, man. That's my team too, and I go, yeah. And then, and then <laughs> next, you know, I'm talking about the team, <laughs> and next thing there, and we're standing at, uh, it was at Lowe's, dude. I'm sitting there looking at freaking, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, what was I looking? At? Oh, uh, uh, freaking cocking, dude. I was looking at because cocking used to be like freaking three dollars, dude. It's like twelve dollars now, dude. I'm like, dude, that's like four times the price. But anyway, um, we're getting taken no matter what. We the people, man. We get taken no matter what. We're like peasants. To the wealthy you know what i mean so but what we got to do man is we got to we got to still keep our heart in this thing man we have our heart in this thing and it's about us we're the fans man we party together we tailgate and uh once again man i'm gonna get a i'm gonna let you and i'm gonna give you guys my feedback i'm going to allegiant stadium for the first time i've never been in a raider corporate setting <laughs> i mean i call it a raider corporate setting because <laughs> you're not allowed to have signs i guess i mean i read all the when i was doing the season tickets i read all the policies and i'm like wow this is really corporate it's real easy to get kicked out of the game and uh you know i'll be careful but at the same time uh you know but I'm gonna give. I'm gonna share my experience. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say. You know, see what it's like. But you know, definitely. Uh, I wonder. I guess they let you bring champagne bottles, uh, and uh, toast champagne in the end zone. Apparently, you know, week two against Arizona. Huh? <laughs> and then right here we got homeboy yelling Raiders. And then AKA Freddie B. What's up, Freddie B. Man, cut day. Hey, Freddie B. I appreciate you, man, sticking around, man. Freddie B. Has uh, been a big part of this channel, like commenting over the years and. Uh, you know, being a part of the uh, conversation, man, and Southern California repping, man. So when I got on here, I used to always be like, Southern California, straight out the IE. And I remember he's like, Riverside. I'm like, yeah, baby. You know what I mean? And it's hot out here right now. I think today, yesterday was like 107. Today's going to be a long day. Um, I do need to get on the freeway. But, um, man, I did want to, uh, hold on, let me pick pause real quick. Well, actually, the pause button's gone. Let me click out of this. Boom. So, yeah, man, I just wanted to respond to your comments and uh, and give you a little piece of, uh, you know, like, because I know exact, because I expect that, I expect that response, and I respect, and I wholeheartedly, you are 100% right. I'm 100% faithful, and faith is believing in what you cannot see sometimes, but, you know, this is the, th this is the boat we're in, man, this is the boat we're in, and I guess, uh, you know, and with more, and back to ownership, you know. There was like, I guess, I guess I was just reading inspirational quotes and I guess this one just stuck with me, but it said, you know, smooth sales never made a good captain. And then there was one, I guess it wasn't quoted by Albert Einstein, but it was about a boat being, a, if a boat's just sitting on shore, then it's not doing what it was designed to do. Our boat is designed for rough waters. Our boat is designed, you know, our ship, I should say, our ship is designed for rough waters, is designed to endure. And I thought, and it wasn't an Albert Einstein quote. I looked it up, I guess, uh, 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 whatever. It was corrected on the internet, but I guess it wasn't. But anyway, it was if, if your boat is on shore, um, it's basically serving no purpose. So basically we're not, this isn't just gonna be handed to us. Uh, then again, some think there's a script in the NFL. I hope that's not true. Um, I know there's shady shit. I know there's there's twist. There's there's definitely corruption. There's definitely they have their ways of of uh, 
you know, fixing a game. And I shouldn't say fixing a game, but they have their ways of steering the momentum in a game with a bad call. We've we've uh, been on the bad end of that as well. So uh, anyway, sorry for the ramble. I'm going to go and I'll be back with uh, we're going to talk the offensive line, man. And one thing I want to talk about the offensive line is we're not going to know the starting lineup for probably about two months. And I'll and I'll, t- I'll talk about that once we publish that and explain how that works. Uh, with Josh McDaniel's offense, man. It's a little uh, research I did over the last couple years on how they shake up this offensive line in the first two months of the season. So, I uh, hope you guys have a great day, man. I appreciate the comments. I appreciate the new subs, man. I'm Raider Dave, this Grimecast Media, and I'll catch you on the next one. I'm out. Peace.